It's Metro's 40th anniversary. Since 1984, Metro trains have been the way to really fly between Chicago and its suburbs. We may not have been able to be at the festivities this weekend, but we're celebrating anyways. And what better way to do that than with a trip report? Metro may be 40 years old, but commuter service in Chicago has existed since the 1850s. Private railroads, whose networks extended from Chicago to both coasts and everywhere in between, ran commuter trains to connect the suburbs around the city to downtown Chicago. These commuter services pioneered many railway technologies that we take for granted today, like cab cars. Unfortunately, in the second half of the 20th century, most of these railroads were struggling to make money running passenger trains. The state of Illinois created the Regional Transportation Authority in 1974 to begin funding commuter services. The private companies kept running the commuter trains until the 1980s when the Rock Island and the Milwaukee Road went bankrupt. The RTA had to start running the services themselves now and so in 1984 they introduced the Metra brand. Metra is short for Metropolitan Rail, and commuter trains around Chicagoland were all folded into the same Metra brand, whether they were operated publicly or privately. Today, Metra directly operates most of the network on a mix of tracks that they own and on freight-owned tracks. They determine the fares, publish schedules, own the trains, and they've even started up some new services since 1984, like the North Central service, which opened in 1996. To commemorate the many railroads that led the way, a number of locomotives have been given heritage liveries, and you can learn more about those by clicking the link above. 10 of the 11 Metro branches are unelectrified and use diesel locomotives, but one, the appropriately named Metro Electric District, stands out from the rest. This line is electrified using 1500 volt overhead wires, and it uses electric multiple units built by Nippon Shario between 2005 and 2016. The Electric District has one main line and three branches. I've made videos on the South Chicago branch and the main branch, but until filming this video, I had never been on the Blue Island branch. This line sees less traffic than the other two, but it's been requested by quite a few of you, so let's go check it out. Hey everyone, welcome to a brand new Trains Are Awesome video. I'm Tom and I am standing at Blue Island Vermont Street Metro Station, just south of Chicago, Illinois. I'm going to ride the Blue Island branch of the Metra Electric District. I can see our train already um, and I'm really looking forward to this. I'm on the wrong platform right now. This platform serves the Rock Island District, which is a diesel hauled line. Right over there is the platform for the Electric District where our Highliner multiple unit is already waiting for us. Unfortunately, the transfer does involve crossing tracks and a street, kind of at the same time. Metra is nice though because there are a few places outside of downtown Chicago where you can transfer between lines. I mean, the schedules aren't really set up to make transferring easy, and I wonder how many people actually do it, but at least it is possible. There's our train, a Highliner 2 electric multiple unit. Though only a little over a decade old, you wouldn't be able to tell just by looking at it. It's got that same bare steel design that trains have had since the 1950s. In fact, the trains used to actually have more color on them than they do now. It's disappointing, really. I'm just not much of a fan of that utilitarian steel look of American trains. I am a fan of pantographs. I know diesel trains have their fans, but I personally love the motor noises of electric trains the best. Anyways, the absolute advantage that the electric line and these Highliner trains have over the diesel trains is that they have high platforms with level boarding. No climbing needed, I just got right on. Alright, so we're on this Highliner electric multiple unit. This one was built by Nippon Shario in 2013, so it's only about 10 years old. Um, and it's built in the classic Metro gallery car setup. So yeah, two by two seating downstairs and then rows of one up here on the balconies with the baggage racks in the middle. If you're lucky, your seat might even have a power socket. Uh, these Highliners also have toilets, which I just realized I've never actually checked out before. So here's what those look like. Nothing wrong with it from what I can tell. And the sink isn't sealed shut? Wow, a metro train where you can actually wash your hands after you do your business? Amazing. Shortly before departure, a Rock Island District train pulls in. 
I don't really think we were waiting for passengers on that train because it seems to me like that transfer would be too tight. We'll be departing in about five minutes. I just bought my ticket online on the Ventra app. Only cost $3 to go downtown, um, thanks to the South Cook County pilot program. As the other train passed, I had a fantastic idea. I actually decided I'm gonna ride way in the back because then I can look out the back window. So the Blue Island branch of the Metro Electric District has the least frequent service of any of the three branches. On weekdays, there are 10 inbound trips into Chicago with 12 outbound trips. On Saturdays, there are only four round trips that use this branch, and on Sundays and holidays, there are none at all. So after about 45 seconds, we made our first stop, and that's pretty typical for the Blue Island branch. It really makes its way through neighborhoods, like kind of back alleys, not a busy corridor, like the main line of the Metro Electric District. Um, and what that means is that most of this line is single track. Though almost the entirety of the branches within Chicago city limits, this line feels very local, almost regional. It's very different from the electric main line that we'll join in a little bit. I made the same comment in my video reviewing the Beverly branch, but it is almost comical seeing these very large double-deckers rolling through these neighborhoods every couple of hours. The Blue Island branch opened in the year 1892, and it was built by the Illinois Central Railroad. The Illinois Central was famous for its long-distance trains from Chicago down south, like the Panama Limited and the City of New Orleans but they also ran a super busy commuter service in and out of Chicago. The early years of the Illinois Central Commuter Service saw a lot of changes. It opened in 1856, and in downtown, the line ran over a trestle above Lake Michigan. Hyde Park was the original terminal, but it was soon extended further south. After the Great Chicago Fire in 1871, the city built landfill up to and beyond the tracks, so now the tracks were firmly on land, and that area today is known as Grant Park. After the two branches were added, the Illinois Central began its most ambitious expansion project yet, grade separation and electrification. Chicago was hosting the World Columbian Exposition in 1893, and the city needed to make the area as safe for visitors as possible. The railroad crossings had to go, and so the line was grade separated. Service kept expanding in the early 20th century. Up to 300 steam-hauled commuter trains were running up and down the line, and the city of Chicago had had it with smoke permeating the air near their precious lakefront. So they forced the Illinois Central to electrify their commuter lines. The railroad complied, and actually they finished the project well before the city-imposed ultimatum of 1940. Electric trains began running in 1926, and both branches were electrified too. And this is kind of what frustrates me. We advocate for things like electrification and great separation in cities all around the US because it would drastically improve regional rail service. Yet it doesn't happen because it's too hard and it's too expensive. And then you look at the Illinois Central and they did all of this over a century ago. It's not like we're reinventing the wheel here. What's more, the returns of the Illinois Central's investments were bountiful. Before World War II, ridership numbers continued to grow year after year. 
so West Pullman Station is the only passing loop on the entire line. That being said, I don't think we've traveled any faster than 30 miles per hour uh, since Blue Island. So far it's only me and then this dad with his little son on the train, so three passengers. But like most passenger railroads, the good times didn't last. By 1977, the newly founded Regional Transportation Authority began funding the service. The Illinois Central ran their electric suburban service themselves with RTA money until 1987, when Metro paid the railroad $28 million to take over the line and the service. And that's pretty much where we are today. However, riding this little used Blue Island branch, the stories of great separation can seem a little foreign. On this branch, there are plenty of railroad crossings. I kind of like the nature of the electric district, where there are these small feeder lines that provide access to the big, busy main line. I also find the station design on this branch pretty funny. Many stations are made of wood with very basic facilities and a short length. There is something to be said about the consistency. After State Street Station, we turn north and join the Metro Electric Main Line, as well as Indiana's South Shore Line. Our train will continue to Millennium Station downtown, operating as a local service making all stops. But that train on the left is an express train. And by taking that, we can get to Millennium Station a lot quicker. Now approaching Kensington. Thank you. A timed cross platform transfer on Metro? I'm speechless. All right, now we're on the main line and we leave 115th Street Station at the same time as the train we were just on, but obviously since we're the express, we will be traveling much faster. This is that great separated line that I talked to you about earlier. Of course, the tracks we are on are electrified because this is an electric train, but the two easternmost tracks are actually not electrified. These are used by both freight trains as well as Amtrak trains, and we run parallel to them until the McCormick Place Convention Center where the electrified commuter lines and the unelectrified tracks split. Wow, that transfer to the Express was the best surprise of the day. I guess if I had looked at the schedule closer, I might have been able to figure it out, but still. I'm here at Van Buren Street about 15 minutes before I thought I would be, so a win is a win. We're ending the video here at Van Buren Street to pay tribute to the soon-to-be-gone Parisian Metra entrance. This entrance, which looks just like the Metro entrances in Paris, was a gift to the city of Chicago from Paris, and because Metro is renovating the station, they're just going to get rid of it without moving it somewhere else. Goodbye, old friend. You deserve better than this. Anyways. The Blue Island branch was a lot of fun to ride. Like I said, a lot of people had recommended it and I enjoyed it. It was cool to ride a line that, you know, had a very, very local character. Like it was just running through these narrow alleys behind uh, several residential areas, but also just straight through this field of solar panels. Very different from your regular Metro experience. and. I love electric multiple units. It's what I grew up riding. So I will always look for an excuse to ride those. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to Trains Are Awesome. This is why they call it the Windy City. We'll see you next time.